was one more. Well, yes, as a representative of the party, we're not used to speak at the end, but since there is a more senior representative who will speak afterwards, I'll take it as a, a compliment. So yes, indeed. First, f thank you very much for this conference, which is very interesting. Thank you, Mayor and Raz. I'll speak about the Chinese perspective, how they see Iran, and uh, I'll speak about uh, what Mayer said when he described the way Iran sees China. So as China, we're really glad to see that uh, Iran is buying our propaganda. We didn't know I was working. So the prism that I am about to focus on in order to understand the subject is comparison between the way Ir uh, Chinese see Iran and China sees uh, Korea, North Korea. And afterwards, I'll make two comments, if time allows, about the significance of strategic partnership, which is also included in Mayer's title in terms of China. And the other one is about the uh, Chinese Chinese relationship uh, with Gulf states, Arab states, and Iran. So, but we'll speak about all the ways, different ways China sees Iran. Uh, so I'll say something first of all in general. One of the things we've seen throughout this war, current beyond pro-Palestinian rhetorics on the side of China, they also stood a lo uh, beside uh, Iran. Uh, when there was the assassination in Damascus, the embassy of China sent a huge bouquet to the Iranian embassy, condemned Israeli attack, and supported the right of Iran to defend itself. Even the Iranian attack was not condemned, of course, and the same is true for the last incident in Tehran as well, and uh, China condemned the assassination of uh, Hania and called it a murder. China also brought up issues related to Israeli attacks in the uh, Security Council, and they never actually condemned Chinese, uh, Iranians' activities. It didn't start uh, recently, so many people now speak about a Chinese-Iranians alliance, maybe with, with uh, Pakistan and Russia included. So a few years ago when they we started hearing about the agreements that were mentioned here between China and Iran then again there were discussions about an Iranian Chinese uh, axis the rise in the import of oil enhanced this per perception and the collaboration uh, during the war in Ukraine also um, so there were different publications about Chinese aid to Russia, and they actually uh, enhanced this narrative. My claim is that although China has multiple interests in Iran, from the ground connection to the West, energy, and uh, um, confrontation to the U.S., of course, the Iranians support uh, is an interest, but China doesn't see Iran as a, a, as, as a partner. It doesn't see Iran as a part of an axis. China sees Iran as just a tool that serves its interests and not the other way around. China doesn't feel guilty like the, so hold on, are we still important in China? That's not it. That's obvious for them that they are there to stay and you are where you are. Although sometimes the rhetorics, Chinese rhetorics, makes us think that the relationship between China and Iran is very important to China and that the friendship is eternal. For example, a week ago, uh, there was the anniversary for the Chinese military, so the ambassador published an article where he praises the Chinese military, describing it as the uh, force that uh, reassures stability in the world in the same article praises the relationship between China and Iran as relationship that were uh, that are very healthy and that they play a major role in improving the welfare of people in both China and Iran and keeping world stability and peace. And uh, then the following day, after the, there was another uh, event, the 
person who represented China was not the prim Chinese prime minister, president, or minister of foreign affairs, but rather Pentin Kwa, who is the deputy of the chair of the 14th Congress. There are more than 10 people in this role, and he's not even including in the top leading representation of China in the world. He was the representative of the president, but they could have uh, chosen someone more senior, although this is the same person who represented China in Beijing in last June in the celebration of Indi Russian Independence Day, and maybe it also shows something with regards to the way um, they see Russia. So anyway, between rhetorics and practice, there is a huge gap, and we should be aware of it. I'd like to add a few more words about the econ problematic economic ties and potential uh, tensions. But let's start with the North Korean prism. So Iran versus North Korea. I suggest using the following question, which I will present as a prism for thinking about the Chinese perspective on the relationship with Iran. Will, is Iran, has Iran turned into the North Korea of China in the Middle East? Okay, so the analogy between Iran and North Korea is very problematic, and I do not intend to say that North Korea and Iran is not the same. That's not the point I'm, I'd like to make. There are many differences between the two, but the prism that this question offers, and now we cling to the Chinese perspective, it's not about comparing between the two countries, between Iran and North Korea, but it's about how China looks at it, and it can bring up new perspective to uh, teach us how China sees Iran. So let me start with some general explanation about China and North Korea. They have long history, shared history. And by the way, when it comes to the history, shared history with Iran, uh, so there were many things during the first millennium, um, they don't uh, attribute it to China or Iran, but a couple of years ago, I invite, okay, no, I'm getting getting rid of the way, let's move, move forward. Now, so for many years, China saw North Korea as a kind of a shot, like a watchdog, a very unpleasant dog. And China thought that it can hold on a leash versus uh, South Korea and Russia and versus American involvement in this region. China thought that North Korea owes to it because China helped it during the Korea War, during the Cold War, and of course afterwards. In 61, 1961, China and North Korea signed, that's the name of the agreement, the Friendship and Collaboration Agreement between China and North Korea. This agreement, by the way, and we'll see it in a moment when we speak about strategic part partnerships of China, is unique, extremely unique in terms of China because it's the only agreement of China that includes an element of defense when two countries are committed to defend each other in any way, whatever it takes, when there is an attack from other countries or a coalition. So uh, it, in 2021, 81, they were like, like they renewed this agreement time and time again, although it wasn't essential because the alliance was supposed to be eternal. And allegedly, wonderful friendship. But in practice, the element of the military, nuclear element, became a problem, became an issue. In the 2000, there were talks of the six parties in Beijing, then they reached agreement about uh, uh, stopping the North Korean program, China tried to show it as its achievements, the mediator. Doesn't sound familiar to you. And that was just a demonstration for the, uh, its ability to control the, the Rottweiler. But very clearly, it turns uh, out that North Korea violated this agreement altogether. So for China, it was actually a major change. And they were uh, there was massive rage in China. And afterwards, extensive nuclear experiment, ballistic experiment under 
undermined stability in Northeast Asia. It was perceived by China as a confrontational effort of North Korea and as if they were trying to challenge everybody. And as such as raised concern about the significance of such a nuclear neighbor. And the, either way, the play, the game with North Korea actually uh, there was also the nuclear issue, and it was perceived as something they can put out of the equation in order to exclude the U.S. from this region, but uh, the uh, North Korean attitude actually made this element a fixed element, and that's the problem according to the Chinese. So as North Korea presented itself implicitly or explicitly as having a nuclear program, Chinese became more and more upset. Some uh, actually thought that North Korea violated the alliance from 61 and it became a nuclear power without b getting approval from Beijing. And the short flirt of Kim Jong-un with Trump a couple of years ago was perceived as an attempt of North Korea of actually uh, getting far away from China. So it seems in China that there is a, a, that there's a situation in which the, dog, the tail wags the dog. And the Rottweiler is not pleasant without a leash, and it might be a big, big problem. And I, first of all, I'd like to apologize uh, to the dog because <laughs> I have, I, I know many, many uh, Rottweilers, and I like them a lot. But back to business, the Chinese concern that the tail, the Chinese tail wags the dog, it all led China to try to create a bigger dependency of North Korea in China to actually hold more meetings, especially recently, between the leaderships to try to bring back the control. But at the same time, there was another problem, and you'll see how it's also related to the Iranians. North Korea and Russia became closer. And very often, they interpret this closeness as part of the axis, North Korea, Russia, Iran, the axis. But it's not definitely so, because China doesn't like the fact that in a month or and a half ago, Russia and North Korea, Putin visited Pyongyang, and they signed the defense agreement. So according to the Chinese, both Russia and North Korea, both of them are considered as inferior, don't get me wrong, Russia and North Korea challenge the dominance of China and create alternatives to China in Northeast Asia, alternatives that actually prevent China from advancing its main agenda in the region, minimizing American influence and increasing its own influence, the tail that wags the dog. So where does it meet Iran? It's uh, the relationship between China and Iran started significantly after the revolution of 79. I'm not going to repeat what was mentioned earlier, nuclear oil, uh, weapon. It was all part of the equation in the 80s and the 90s. China, you better remember that, was a minor player in the region, but they had aspirations. As when this player became more and more dominant at the economic level in the region, Iran became a more relevant for China and a tool, a more relevant tool for China, but also for a, a minor de uh, partner. First of all, in the 90s and on, as an important source of energy because they wanted to diversify. And Iran was perceived as an important regional power which will become even more important and its economic potential will become more important. And this is a Chinese hope, but still we think here about a big, big country here with uh, dozens of millions of people, more than 60 millions in the 90s, today is more than uh, sorry, 60 millions and today more than 80 millions. The ground connection that Iran could provide to China was also perceived as very important, and by the way, especially in light of the war in Ukraine, because the war in Ukraine creates a buffer zone, then China think about how to bypass it. Iran all of a sudden becomes attractive in this context, especially in potential. And of course, China and Iran saw eye to eye as a you, uh, when it comes to the U.S., and they created a kind of um, 
partnership. And by the way, if it's China and Iran actually do not agree about the meaning of the dominance of U.S. in terms of Iran, American presence in the Gulf is a problem, okay, to oversimplify it. But in terms of the China, this presence is a solution. The, it, it's actually it's an opportunity for allow the U.S. to take care of the security affairs. It's very convenient for the day Chinese. They want, don't want to change it. In recent decades, China was very interested in the nuclear agreement of 2015. It thought that the agreement will allow it to increase uh, uh, collaboration with Iran. But on the one hand, it actually tightened the the the, the the leash, but on the other hand, it can also uh, enhance Iran. In 2016, when the agreement uh, came to came into force, the president, Chinese president, came on an official visit to Iran, and um, it was also at the time of Arab Spring, and both countries agreed and declared that they upgrade their relationship to what is called strategic comprehensive partnership. That's formally the type of relationship with, with the it created a media buzz, a major one, and then the president of China declared that he supported Iran as a member, a full member in SCO, organization where Iran was an observer earlier. And this official membership was approved only five years later in 2021. Then it was approved, and two years later it was implemented. And at the time, Iran was invited to join the ally to the BRICS that was mentioned as well. So beyond the symbolic importance of the Chinese visit in 2016 in Tehran, the visit also uh, ignited many agreements, economic agreements between the countries. Most of these agreements were not implemented, uh, did not become practical. You described the historical agreement from 1888. I don't know what the title is. The Iranians should not f could be con Concerned because these agreements with China will not be implemented anyway, so it's it's okay. So beyond that, the um, the uh, the withdrawal of the U.S. from the nuclear deal in 2018 uh, destroyed the plans. It's an important point. China actually condemned uh, U.S. from the because of this withdrawal and supported Iran, but the Chinese company did not intend to risk themselves and do business with Iran, which is actually the situation today. And China, the state, as opposed to its image, did not force them to do that. It understood that it's not good for business. So that if China, similar to its approach to North Korea, feels that the nuclear agreement can safeguard the state under a certain control and allow China to continue to be active or even to enhance its activity for the benefit of its interest in the region while pushing away the Americans, in both cases they were proven wrong. And this is a topic for a research, I think, which will be very, very interesting. And uh, without going into the argument of whose fault it was, but anyway, in the Iranian case, there was a situation where Iran is really less attractive for China, even if it's re more Im important at the political level. So when the Chinese speaks about uh, uh, global south, but I just want to mention that Iran is not less attractive in all areas. So when it comes to oil in the short term, it's very important. China, and it is important, the non-official China found these sanctions on Iran good for business. So it took a while. It didn't happen immediately. It took about two or three years until the rise of uh, um, Chinese import from Iran rose dramatically, but private Chinese companies found ways, very often smaller companies, especially through Malaysia and other places, to import a huge quantities of oil from Iran for very cheap prices. Actually, China, even if not officially, if they import more oil from Iran than they ever did. So of course, there is also the element, uh, whether it's a dependence, dependency, but the Iranians won't admit that. But the problem is, and I really limit the discussion because we don't have enough time. If for a, a long while, China thought that it has major leverages over Iran to keep the Rottweilers up, 
under control throughout recent years, it understood more and more that here there is a chance that the tail wags the dog. Iran wags China. So the importance in terms of uh, China to um, is not they don't see it, uh, Iran is threatening as North Korea, but still in terms of China they see it as a problem because of its growing contact with the Arab Gulf states. I'm not going to talk about the reconciliation agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia, which is also important. Maybe we'll speak about it in, when we discuss the questions. But anyway, this uh, enhanced ties of Iran with Russia and the growing ties with North Korea and Russia, they give Iran some alternatives, and China is not satisfied. They try to um, look at it in a positive way, but they don't really believe that. I have two minutes left now. Okay, so there were two comments that I wanted to make. Uh, first of all, strategic, comprehensive, strategic comp partnership between China and Iran and the relationship between China and Gulf states. So I'll make it uh, short, um, but you need to understand that the concept of strategic partnership, comprehensive strategic uh, uh, partnership, this is something that China uh, has been advancing for many years, ever since the end of Cold War, for the very simple reason that strategic partnership allows you to make diplomatic declarations with zero uh, price to pay, no commitment whatsoever. So that's why we see that China and India, for example, they have strategic partnership. Wonderful. And a few years later, they had they 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 fought each other. It doesn't and China. Uh, and Ukraine, they have strategic partnership, wonderful. 2014 Crimea, China did not say anything. 2022 Ukraine, as far as China was concerned, it was okay, it's not her problem. Anyway, I will connect it to the uh, issue of uh, Gulf state perspective. So uh, you better remember that 2016, when Xi Jinping got to arrived in Iran and also to Saudi Arabia and Egypt, these were the countries he focused on. 2022, when Xi Jinping came to the region, he uh, arrived in one place, our Saudi Arabia. By the way, 2018, he also bothered to go to UAE. So with all of them, he had very important strategic partnerships. In other words, when we look at the relationship between China and Iran in the perspective of the Gulf states, from the perspective of the Gulf states, it's very obvious that the importance of the other Gulf states is greater than the uh, importance of, China, of Iran, they are much more important to the Chinese. Now, I'll stop here. The, uh, I, I could say a lot more, but we'll keep it for a different occasion. Thank you very much.